everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Crate. Today we're going to get started working on the Fruit and Flora mini album. And uh, this is an 8.5 by 8.5. We're going to get started on page 1. And this is the um, overall design for page 1. So I've got a couple of flaps that I'm working with here. And this is what the finished closed positions are going to look like. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sit down. And we're going to start by laying uh, the two outside pieces down. And I'm still trying to decide which way I want to go. That's kind of busy, but I like it. And um, this is pretty too. So I'm kind of going back and forth a little bit on um, what I want to do. So I think I'm going to do this because I know on the inside cover, I've got a pretty busy pattern. So I think I'm going to put the yellow down. <clears throat> All right, I'm just sitting down now getting started. Hope everybody's having a good day. And I feel like it's been forever since I've done anything. So first thing I want to do is make sure I've got my pockets on the side. This is going to be the spine side. And this is going to go here. So I'm going to go ahead and install this right now because I'm actually going to put a flange right next to it. <clears throat> and just so you know, this strip is one inch wide. Okay, so there we go. So that is installed on the spine side, the left side, page one, and it is one inch, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install this large flap, and it is going to go on the right-hand side, and it's just gonna go right flush to the edge, and this is the pocket side of the page. And I see I don't have any tape on it yet, so let's go ahead and do that. If you're new to the channel, this is um, what I call a tape tear tool. And it was something that was sort of born out of necessity. I was having a hard time tearing my tape and getting picking scissors up and taking them off and on my hands with the arthritis was kind of a challenge. So this has worked out to be a real good thing. We sell these in our shop. And again, it's called the tape tear tool. If you watch the channel for a while, you're probably pretty familiar with it. All right, so the next thing is this is gonna get installed here. And what I'm doing is I'm just looking to make sure it's even top to bottom and it looks like it's hanging off a little. So I'm just gonna take probably a 32nd of an inch off so that it's not hanging off the edge of the pocket page. Let's see how we did. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the tape off. I'm going to turn it sideways so I can see both corners before I lay it down. bit of dog hair in there which is everywhere in this house okay right there on the edge so I'm gonna go ahead and give you this measurement so this is eight and a half by eight eight and a half by eight and so you're gonna score it half an inch half inch, seven and a half inch, and fold it over. And so that's what it's gonna look like when you're done. Okay, and now we are going to go ahead and add this detail page, uh, piece, which is gonna be on the top flap. And so now you can start to see it's building this frame. And I need glue for that. Just double checking to see that I inked all my edges and I have. I 
again, this is one inch, one inch by seven and seven eighths. I got a little excess glue here. Get my wipe out to get it off my hands. <coughs> okay, so there we go. So now we have two flaps that are gonna be um, featuring these ephemera journaling cards. One is gonna be um, this this one, and this one's gonna layer on top. And so when you flip it up, you'll see the um, journaling space here. So what I'm first gonna do, because I want these nested on each other exactly right, what I'm first gonna do is take each one of these and put them on their flap. So this flap is, um, let me double check. It's four by six, and it's actually a little bit bigger than that. So I want an eighth inch border. This is actually just under four inches and just under six inches. So I wound up doing uh, four and one sixteenth by eight and one sixteenth to get this perfect border. So depending on the size of the border, you may want to adjust that um, accordingly, or just trim out the flap to fit the mat you want here. So either one is going to work. Um, it's not going to be critical. It's really the look you want. You know, do you want a nice wide border or do you like the tight border like myself? So again, these are four and one sixteenth, and I said six and one sixteenth, but that's not true. I take it back because you need a half inch flange. It's six and two, four, six, eight, nine sixteenths. Six and nine sixteenths. So the other way you can do it is just do your half inch flange and then measure this to be folded under, measure this to be six and one sixteenth, which is what I usually do. Because you know that when you do the score line, it's taking up some of the paper anyways. So as a rule, I try to do my score and then measure the finished panel. But that's that's a preference. Not everybody wants to do it that way. Okay. Uh, both of these, and you'll need two, one for each one of your ephemera cards. All right, okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to get our ephemera laid down. And I think, yeah, it's all inked and ready to go. Okay, that one is going to attach to the top and this one's going to attach going sideways. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so in the end, I want the, this overlap to fit right inside this cream square, just like so, so you see a frame around the bottom of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this one first, and then I'll figure out where to place this one. So it's gonna go on top, just like so. It's just gonna get attached to the very top of this flap, centered. So let's get our center mark. and I came in without a ruler. So the top flap is just under six inches. So we're gonna say three inches. I put a three inch, so between here and here, there's the center. And then I want the center of this, not this, the center of this one. So there's my little tick mark. So I'm gonna line these two things up to get this centered. 
I'm going to make sure it's opening in the right way. And it is okay. So then, and when I'm done, I'll just take my um, kneaded eraser and pull that little little thing of graphic. Oh, you know what? It doesn't look centered, does it? It looks over this way too far. So I may lift that again. I'm try that one more time. Oh, part of that is because we're going to have... Nope, that shouldn't matter. Shouldn't matter. It's not six inches. It's less than six inches. That's why. It wasn't off by much, but enough that it would bother me. So it needs to be... Try that one more time. I'm gonna look at it before I lay it down. That looks even now. Okay, that was off maybe a sixteenth of an inch. As we add additional layers, it'll be less and less obvious, but you might as well try to fix it while well, while you can. Okay, so the next thing is this is going to be attached. So the, the flap opens like this. So this is going to be attached on the right hand side. And I want to tuck it under this so we've got this look of a frame, like so. So I'm going to take my tape off and then I'm going to slide it under and then push it into place. Again, this is the pocket side, right hand side of the page. And this is the look I'm going for. Okay, so that's in place. Here we go. Then the next thing is, this is going to lay in just like so. And so there is our page one layout. So this is needs to be um, cut down just a little bit <clears throat> because I'd like to see a black line through here. So I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch off, I think. Let's start with a 16th and see how that looks. And then I'm not going to glue it down until I get some magnets put in place. I still need another eighth. All right, that looks good. That's one and two. So I'm thinking about my magnet placement. So we definitely need something to hold this flap in place. Let's go ahead and put a magnet here. And I think what I want to do is put the other one on this section. just like so. So there's one other flap here and I haven't decided how I want to keep that closed yet. I'm going to need to think about that but for now we can go ahead and lay this in. Okay and I left my additional inside or b-side trim pieces in the other room so I need to come back with that in just a second. Oops. Alright, not sure what I want to do with that yet. 
I think this is going to be a pocket and if it is that's too much bulk so I might just leave that as a flap okay and that way it would work all right well I'm not ready to glue this down until I make a permanent decision on magnet placement but I'll be right back Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Crate. We're gonna continue working on page one. So I went away to collect the B-side um, papers for page one and I realized, I started thinking through what, what I had said in the first video or the first half of this video, and I realized I gave you a bad measurement. So I am going, it's corrected in the banner, um, but I say the wrong thing. So let me tell you what I mean. So this flap right here, this large, pick up the white paper. This large foldover flap. I told you it was eight and a half by eight. It is eight inches up and down, and it's eleven inches across. So you're going to score a half inch and seven and a half. So again, this is eleven inches. So it's an eight and a half by eleven. You're going to take off a half inch. So that's going to be the height. Score, score a half inch. Score seven and a half. Sorry about that. The banner is correct. And you're gonna do the same thing for um, page eight. Okay, so with that, I have gone through and selected all my, oh, these are duplicates. Selected all the um, papers for the inside. So here's what I'm doing. This is gonna go here. And this is gonna fit here. And then this is my plan for right here. So I'm gonna, um, color block this and this is going to come. So I had got when I left, I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to keep this as a flap or make it a pocket. And I've decided I'm going to go ahead and make it a pocket. And I am going to, and I added a magnet here. So, so there is magnet, a magnet here and it's passing through to this magnet. It's gonna hold that in place, and then this is gonna be attracted to that, okay? And then again, this is gonna be a pocket. So the first thing I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna go ahead and lay down these pieces right here, and then I can glue my pocket shut. I'm just gonna put a fine bead of glue on either side, and then we can cover that. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And I don't look very prepared this morning, it's true. Um, it doesn't look like I inked anything. So let's get that out. So I wanna remind everybody, I use um, this product called Powder Puff, which I love, and the color I'm using is mahogany. Let me see if I've got it, yeah. It does look like I actually bothered to trim it, so that's, <laughs> that's something. <laughs> All right. And let's see, how did I do here? Yes, this is also trimmed. Just looks like I didn't ink anything. So what do I love about the powder puffs? Well, and I tell you guys this all the time, but I know I'm getting new subscribers every day too. This is very spongy. Um, it's not hard like a regular um, ink pad where it's really dense, which is great for inking stamps, but when you want to distress the edges like what I'm doing, you need something a little softer, and that's why typically you have an applicator that you put on top of your ink pad and then use the applicator for your paper. But the way these are designed, and they can be used for stamps as well, is they're spongy, so you don't need to pick up an applicator. And I like that because I don't like searching for things on my desk. And I also, the idea of having um, a different applicator for every color ink gets to be, you know, so you've got an ink pad and an applicator. So I like this idea. Um, I'm really happy with the way that works out and it's just one less thing on my tabletop. All right, let's get some ink on this too. So it's been a while since I got a video out, so I'll give you guys a little update on what's going on. So January is always a busy month for us because we spend, and when I say we, uh, Julie and I spend um, a week at Creativation looking at all the new um, products from in the craft industry. Our focus is predominantly paper, but we look at everything. So we're gone for a week. So when we get back, we're backed up shipping. In addition to that, January, and February are big release months for the industry. 
so we had some pre-orders going on. So then we had to catch up for being out a week and then pre-orders come in and when you have pre-orders, instead of, you know, getting 12 to 20 orders a day, uh, the day the product gets in, you've got to ship out about a hundred packages. So we've just been kind of digging our way out of that and things should be um, getting back to normal. So I should be able to start releasing, um, increasing the frequency of my releases so you guys can get more content and we'll be a little bit caught up in general. So I think this is what I'm going for. I'm trying to decide. This is my last chance to make some decisions on what I wanna do. I kinda of like that. And I have that. So this is going to be a pocket. So I'm just trying to remember that there's going to be something in here anyway. Very likely um, a piece of ephemera or a journaling card. So I think, I think this is what I like. That sort of continuous red. So this is what I'm going to do. So as usual, we're going to lay down the smallest strip first, then we'll go to the next strip. Then we'll glue our pocket in place and add the cover to the pocket. And now I'm just turning it to the side so I can see end to end and center this piece. And I've got to make sure I'm right side up. Okay, I am. Because this, this particular piece of paper is directional. And we're good. It's almost time for a new bottle of glue. It's also almost warm enough that we'll start shipping glue again. Um, that should be coming up pretty soon. I almost put it in upside down anyway. The words are so small, it's hard to read. This is from the Patterns and Solids. There we go. So I want to get close to the score line, but I don't want to get into it because I want my page to operate freely. It's a nice, humid day here in San Diego. It's very uh, foggy, and that means I'm getting a little bit more time to play with placement because um, my glue's not drying so quickly, and I like that. I love those warm days, but it, they're hard craft days. to get in the habit of using these wipes um, because what happens is I pick up so much glue on my hands then I start especially if I'm working with anything cream I start leaving a trace all right so now we're just gonna look to center this and I just wanted to close this to make sure the flap is actually gonna cover the edge and it does ready to go this is not directional so it's really whatever way you want it to look and this is also from patterns and solids lovely. Now I'm going to put a small bit of glue here and on the top and the bottom. Let's do the top first so I don't run my hand over it. And you don't need much. Actually I did it wrong. You should do the flap because then you know you're not extending past where you need to go. All right. 
right, let's hold that in place for just a second. There we go. This is going to lay down right here, and it looks like I need to trim that a little. So let's take a look at that. Okay, just right. So since I trimmed it, I need to re-ink that edge. Definitely pattern, uh, collection pack. 12 by 12 collection pack. hear my puppy dog in the background her collar okay I'm making sure I'm going the right direction yes I am Okay, so now this is a pocket. And then this is gonna go here. So it looks like I got this one trimmed out, which is great. Let me get my pick tool. I'm gonna get this tape up. And then when we're done, we've still got some pieces to place on the front, the B side. Nola. What are you doing? You don't need that. That's not for you. I'm trying to snack on some paper here. Okay, so there's our inside. It's looking lovely. I'm liking it. And then here's our top. So we're going to go ahead and get our secondary pieces put in and honestly I, I did this um a day ago so I forgot if I'm doing the dark red or the light red no nope, it's definitely this side okay I didn't realize I, I did the same thing on the inside oh it's no it's different it's very similar but it's different this is patterns and solids as well both inside and on the cover Page one. Okay. Okay, and so for the flip side of the flaps, I've decided that I want one of these to be a journaling space, and I think I'm going to do that one as a journaling space, and then this will be um, a coordinating flap. And 
I'm thinking of, and I haven't decided yet, uh, color, oops, I got it wet with my, um, with my wipe, a color block um, on one side of this, just to make it a little more interesting. It's too much, too much yellow or too much red. So this um, particular journaling card is actually the flip side of this. So you get two of each one. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So this I'm gonna set aside. This I'm definitely gonna lay down. It's already been inked. And of course you can still put a photo on here and you can do both. You can do a small photo up here and have some journaling both. burnish that okay and you've got a magnet in here so like I was saying you could do a simple a small photo up here and then have journaling down here I don't think I'd want to cover up the fruit plus it already takes up you know it'd be a very small photo but a school photo would fit there so something like that or a very small cropped photo okay now let's make a decision about what we're doing here and <clears throat> I think I like the idea of um, color blocking this. And it looks like I need to trim it anyway. <clears throat> it's a little too wide. Okay, this should do it. Yeah, perfect. Okay. And it's right in the hinge, so I'm gonna take a little bit off the edge. Okay, now it fits. Now, the decision of whether I color block or not. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and turn it sideways. And I think I am because I think that's just too much red. So with that, let me figure out what I'm doing here. Okay, so now I just trim this down. It's gonna be two and a half two and a half inches wide. And I think it's a little too tall, yeah. So it looks like I need to shave a little bit off and hopefully I'm in frame. All right, so I crinkled my corner there. Okay, I straightened it out. I need to ink my edges, so this is going to go here. I'm going to trim this down to fit after I place this one. That's not ink. This is ink. Okay. Okay, so we'll go ahead and place this. And then we'll come back and trim down the, the red to fit. If you want, the other option would be to make this a pocket and just glue down three of the four sides. And you have a little stash spot, but... I, since there's already a pocket on the inside, I'm just going to leave this as a, as a simple photo mat. Flap. Okay. So now I am going to trim this down to fit. So three and a half would fit perfectly. So it's gonna be three and three eighths. Let's see how that works out. And that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna see if it'll lay down, and it does. So let's ink it and lay it down. And 
And then um, I'm gonna walk through this and that'll be the end of page one. And we're gonna do the same page design uh, with the exception of it being a mirror. So the operating large flap will, will come off the other side. It'll open to the left. This one opens to the right. And uh, of course we'll have different paper. off my hand so I don't transfer it someplace else. Okay, there we go. So there is the finished page one. So we've got this that opens up to a journaling space. Got a photo space here, photo space here. Then this whole thing opens to the right and we have a pocket here, and the rest of this is photo space. You can also put a small photo here, up and down, or um, place your photos directly onto a photo mat in the pocket. Either one will work. Okay, so that's the end of page one. Like I said, we're gonna have the same flap design for page eight, but it'll be decorated differently. I am gonna use ephemera cards on page eight also. It just will be a different set of ephemera cards. I'll try to find one that nests on top of the other one nicely like this did here. So thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. Glad to be back and building for you guys again. I know it's been a little while. This is the Fruit and Flora collection from Graphic 45. All of the items that I'm using in this um, tutorial are available with the exception of the black cardstock in our shop. And there'll be links in the description. And if you scroll down past the description, you'll also find the cut list for each of the pages. Um, in addition to the cut list that's in the description, I also put a banner across for everything that I cut. So it's not necessary, you can cut as you go. I know some people like to cut ahead, so I do both. Um, my preference is to cut as I go, but that's really, a, you know, sort of a personal thing. So it's in there if you want it, and um, we appreciate it if you take a look at things in our shop. We try to be priced competitively, um, and this is available. Um, in our shop right now. It's one of the newest collections from Graphic 45. Thanks again. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. See you soon.